In this video, we're going to talk about colorblindness. This is a topic that has been requested by a lot of students. We're going to find out first if maybe you are colorblind. Now, you may not know it, and then after a few of these tests, you might realize that either you're colorblind or you have a color deficiency. And then we're going to take a look at what colorblind people, colorblind pilots, are seeing on charts. This is the whole purpose of this. I want to give you some tips if you're colorblind or you have color deficiencies on how to actually excel during the exam uh, if you're going to take an FA exam. So let's get to it. Now, you might be wondering if you are one of those that are colorblind. Well, there's one in 12 men that are that have color deficiencies and one in 200 women that have color deficiencies. So this could mean that in the US, there's over 17,000 remote pilots that are colorblind. And so we need to understand how this is going to affect you for the airspace. And maybe you're not colorblind, but you're interested in seeing what is going on. Uh, I know I was always interested in this topic and actually someone in our office uh, is has a color deficiency. So we did some testing. Actually, I thought that was pretty uh, pretty funny to see what they were looking at and, and quite mind-blowing actually. So there's really three different types of colorblindness. Within each of these, there are some subtypes, but uh, you'll see people that are red and green colorblind or have color deficiencies. We'll have blue and yellow colorblindness. And then lastly, we have people that are completely colorblind, which means that, well, they're only seeing in black and white. There's really no other colors in here. Now that last one is pretty rare, but the most common one is going to be the red-green colorblindness. Uh, it's, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the words for these. I'm going to put them down in here. So that's the green deficiency right here. Uh, this term is one of the most common ones. What happens is that you'll see a green is going to look like red. And uh, this is normally pretty mild. Now, this is just a deficiency. This is not the full uh, colorblindness in this case. And then the other one is going to be the red deficiency. Again, the word is right here. You can pronounce it and have fun at home. And uh, this is when the red looks like green and or it's going to look a little bit dull. And uh, in this case, you, it's going to be also pretty mild. Now, these two is what one of our employees actually has. And I'm going to show you some examples in a second of what this is going to look like. And then the last one, these two terms right here is when you can't tell at all between red and green apart. So obviously on some of these charts, especially on the uh, eastern side of the country, there's going to be a lot of, gr of red and there's going to be a lot of green. So it's going to be very difficult uh, to figure out the difference between the two. But let's do a quick test here. Can you actually see the gap in the lines? There's a break in one of these lines in here. The one on the left in the middle are pretty obvious to me. The one on the right is a little bit more difficult. But if you cannot see the difference between these lines, then well, chances are you have some kind of a deficiency in the red and the green. So you might want to go uh, see someone for your vision and make sure that you get a full test. But here's the answer right here. That's where the breaks in the lines are going to be located. Now, you may be wondering, what does it look like? This is the green deficiency right here. If you're not colorblind, then you're going to see a difference compared to the actual uh, chart that is in real life. But if you are actually uh, color deficient, green deficient, then you won't be able to see the difference between the two. This is the test that we did with our employee. And he looked at them and he said, yep, these two look exactly the same to me. And then same here, this is going to be if you have a red deficiency, this is what uh, theirs is going to look like compared to the actual good one on the left side of the screen. Now let's look at the other type, which is the blue and yellow color blindness. This right here is the difficulty to tell between the blue and the green and then the yellow and the red. So that's going to make it a little bit more difficult on the charts especially on the west coast of the US where there is a bit more tan colors uh, on the charts. And then also there is this one right here, which is going to be when you're unable to tell the difference between blue and green, purple and red, and yellow and pink. I know it's a lot of different colors, but you can see also the examples of the sample and then the actual uh, colors that colorblind people are seeing when they have these deficiencies. And uh, of course, that's going to make it also pretty complicated on the chart in some of these cases. Now, here's a test, and I'm not going to lie, one of these, the one all the way on the right, I have a hard time seeing it, and I don't think I have any colorblindness. So if you can't make the difference and find the, the break in the line on the right side, it's probably okay. We did a test in the office, and most people could not see it. Uh, so you can see there is a bit of a gap right here, right here, and right here. And again, like I said, the one on the right, you may not be able to see the difference. 
Now the last type is the complete color blindness. In this case, you cannot see any colors at all. It's called monochromacy, and then it's very uncommon in the first place. Now in this case, you may actually have trouble with focusing and seeing clearly. You could also have trouble uh, being extremely sensitive to light. If that's the case, you'll see the black and white, no colors at all. And uh, I'll give you some tips anyway. Even if you have this, you should be able to identify most of the airspace, but there are some subtilities that you may not be able to find on the charts themselves. Themselves. All right, now let's go ahead and give you some tips on how to identify this. So if you're uh, if you're not colorblind, this might be a good review for you. So you might want to stick around. If you're colorblind, obviously, I'm going to show you just the chart as it is normal, and then I'm going to show you kind of how to identify this without even seeing colors. Let's get started with Class Bravo airspace. And Class Bravo airspace is actually uh, going to be the least difficult of all of them because it, of the bright blue. The magenta typically are the most difficult to see for colorblind people, especially if you have a green deficiency. But the blue here is actually not going to be all that bad. But here's a few tips. First off, you know that the Class Bravo airspace is a weird shape. You can see here we have one circle in the middle, and then you notice here it says surface to 8,000. Uh, this is an indication here that it's either, let's think about if you're watching this in black and white, for example, this could be either a Class Bravo or Class Charlie airspace. Well, the reason why you know that this is a Class Bravo and not a Class Charlie is because of all these weird looking rings. You see there's another one right here in this whole area. There's another one right here in this whole area right here. Click, click. You can see all of this area here. This is all going to be um, obviously a Class B because it's not just simple two rings. There is three or four rings. Class B we know is only going to be two rings. So that's your tip right here to figure this out. Now it might get a little bit more tricky if you're trying to identify the airports inside because uh, you may not be able to see the difference between a blue airport and a magenta airport. Magenta airport is uncontrolled, the blue airports are going to be controlled. Now you can see in the middle of a Class Bravo airspace, obviously it's going to be a controlled airport, so this is going to be right here a blue airport. Now we can look at this airport here, which is a dash line. So you're going to say, is that a Class Delta starting at the surface, or is that going to be a Class Echo starting at the surface? Well, here's a tip. You see this 3-8 right here? That's the only time we'll see that symbol is if it's a Class Delta. So even if you're seeing this in black and white, you should be able to find exactly that this is a Class Delta airport. And not only that, that this airport is going to be controlled here. And the reason also, I'm going to zoom in real quick, you can see that this is a controlled airport. Why? Because it has an ATIS and it has a control tower. Do you see it says CT right here, 121.1? That means it's a control tower. So this airport is depicted as blue. Even if you can't see the colors, you should still be able to identify that. Now, as far as Class Charlie airspace, it could look exactly like the Class Bravo airspace because it has this solid line. Now, if you can see colors, you can see it's magenta. If you can't, then you will know that this is a Class Charlie because, first off, it has this marking, which is uh, very much the same one as Class Bravo, but you see there's only two rings. There's one ring right here and then one ring right here that tells us it's a Class Charlie. One starts at the surface, the other one on the outside starts a little bit higher and then goes typically to a lower altitude. So in this case, you can identify pretty quickly that this is going to be a Class Charlie airspace. Now from here, we can roll straight into Delta. I mentioned Delta a little bit. Now you should be able to identify here on this chart that there is a Delta airport, Class Delta, because it's a, it's a dashed line. Now it's blue. If you're colorblind, you may not see that it's blue. But what you'll see in here is the fact that it has this symbol, that 2-8 in, in between these kind of uh, bracket-looking symbols. That means Class Delta. There is no real way around it. This is really easy to identify. So in this case, straightforward, Class Delta. Look for the little bracket, and then you'll know it's not a Class Echo starting at the surface. Here's another example, in case you weren't for sure, but here's another Class Delta located right here, and you can see that it has this 4-4 right here that's going to tell us that uh, this airspace goes from the surface to 4,400 feet MSL. And this one is a little bit different because it has a little extension right here, but still it's easy to verify that it's a Class Delta. Also, another tip, of course, because of the airport, you can see that the airport here has a CT, control tower, 118.3. And then also it has an ATIS. So from here, you should be able to identify that this is a controlled airport inside of a Class uh, Delta. 
Now from here, things can get a little bit tricky with the class Echo Airspace, especially if you have a green color deficiency and you happen to be on the west side of the country where things are a little bit higher up in elevation, which means they're gonna be looking more like a tan color uh, on the sectional chart. So here's an example of an airport. This is actually in Arizona. And uh, you can see that in the middle of it, we have this dashed line. If you can't see the colors, this could be either class Delta or it could be class Echo starting at the surface. How do I know it's class Echo at the surface? Because it doesn't have these little brackets on the side. So that tells me right away this is a, a class E starting at the surface. And I can even uh, verify that by looking at the details here. And it says ASOS, which is the automated weather information and uh, it doesn't have a control tower. So I know it's an uncontrolled airport in the middle of a class Echo starting at the surface. And then around it, you see that there's this uh, shaded magenta or shaded black and white, if this is all you can see, or maybe even shaded blue. If you have uh, a green color deficiency, it might actually look a little bit blue. In this case, it's not class Echo starting at 1200, which is very, very rare. It's actually class Echo starting at 700 in this case. So because of the context, you should be able to tell that this is class Echo starting at 700. Now this is a great location here because we actually have a class Echo starting at 1200 right up here. So this right here is the line of class Echo. It's blue, it's shaded. How do you know? Because it's pretty rare in the first place. And uh, in this case, it would be pretty difficult to actually make the difference between these two. I'm not gonna lie, if you're green color deficient, you're probably not gonna see a difference between this shaded blue right here and this shaded magenta right here. Context is everything. Because this is so rare, I would assume in most cases that it's class E starting at uh, 700, but what's gonna happen is that in some places, you see these lines are pretty straight like this. They're not anywhere near an airport. So that could be a clue that uh, class Echo is kind of weird here. It would start at, uh, at, at 1200 and then at 14,500 in the middle. But uh, yeah, this is one that's gonna be uh, difficult, quite frankly, uh, no, no lying in here. Now, what also you'll see in here is we have MOA, military operating areas, and we have restricted areas. Now, if you colorblind, you may not be able to see the difference. Again, with the green deficiency here, this uh, line right here is likely going to look a little bit blue. And uh, in reality, it's actually magenta. How do you know? Because it says right here, it says MOA, military operating area. So that's an easy fix. And then on the right side here, we have a restricted area. This is blue and it's got the, these hairlines right here. And again, you'd be able to tell that this is blue because you know that restricted areas are blue. So instead of just looking at the marking in itself and looking at the color, look at the label right here, and then you'll be able to tell. Now, does it matter if it's blue or magenta? Actually, it doesn't really, because all you have to do is just look at the label. You see it's restricted, you know you have to stay away from it. Here, you see that it's a, a military operating area, it means you can go in there, but you have to just be careful. So keep that in mind. The labels are really good because there's another uh, restricted right here. Uh, the color really doesn't matter all that much in this case. I hope this was helpful. Let us know in the comments if you actually figured out that you were colorblind because of this video, because I'm really interested. Also, if you are colorblind and you took the FA exam, make sure you leave a comment down in the section. If you have any tips that I didn't talk about on how you were able to be successful, I'm sure it would help other people as well. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.